So we get underway. Young Fraser wins in the middle down to Buckley, but he is absolutely beset upon. And it and looks like, sorry, Drew, looks like a uh, match-up of the stars with Buckley and Anthony Kutafidis lining up beside, but it looks like Beaumont is pretty keen to uh, push on to Buckley, so we may have a, a bit of a three-way dance. Well, neither Ruckman got a touch of that, so it's going to be a free kick to be taken by Porter. Gone. Bradley, you're gone. Williams runs him down. Franchina, kick inside the 50. Well, Whitnell never made a contest of it, and his man left him. Presti Giacomo to take the mark. Here comes Presti, out of defence for the Pies. Comes wide to O'Bree. And when Collingwood absolutely flogged Carlton in round three earlier in the year, Sav Rocker that day kicked six, and today he's out of the side. Dimitina. Half back towards half forward. Tarrant couldn't quite complete the mark, but comes down with the footy. Away to Williams. Kick by Williams to Anthony Rocker. He was clever to backhand the ball away from his opponent. Here goes Neon Leon. The whistle's gone. He's dragged down, and Davis will take a free kick just outside the 50. Too far out to score. A sparky type player. And that kick is too wide and out of bounds in the forward pocket. And not a very good option either, Jared. when you're kicking towards the boundary line. There's a very large margin there of error. Yep. And as a result, uh, how many times do we see the ball being forced back over the line instead of maybe kicking it to the goal square to give yourself some sort of opportunity? Porter, got an important role to play with Matthew Allen on the sidelines for Carlton. Hickmott, enjoying his best ever season. Well, he was a star last week, uh, Kevin, against Hawthorne. They kicked eight goals in the first quarter. Carlton to blitz the Hawks. And, uh, well, Adrian Hickmont was one of the players that was uh, best of field to halftime. He finished the match on the bench just uh, with a bit of a rest. A bit of rotation. Yep. Josh Fraser to Kinnear. Good to see him playing maybe on the forward line. He played a lot of his early football at centre-half back. But maybe just to uh, take the shackles off him a little bit. Play on the forward line for the Pies today. Buckley pumps the ball deep inside. 50. Big pack of players. Davis, dangerous player last week. McKay's been magnificent this year across half back. Of course, that ball was taken by Porter. Interesting to see how he performs today. Lecuria back to Fraser. So the Pies mixing it early with the Blues. Silvani, did he get a shot from Tarrant? Not paid. Kudafidis testing his strength along with Mel Michael. And there's a ball up just 20 metres out from goal. I'll have a bit of a watch, but I vaguely think that Kinnear might have the job on him. Yeah, spot on, no, Drew. I was about to mention that he has got the job on him. It's a big task for young Ben Kinnear. Anthony Rocker, clean possession. Davis, out wide. Dimitina hasn't got the distance across the face of goal. And out of bounds, bit of interference according to the crowd there. And they're not happy. The umpire calls for a throw in. Now, Jared, it looked like then that Burns might have been playing on McKay. Interesting to see whether Scott Burns, who's a tough yep. player, defender, whether or not he's playing on McKay to stop some of that run coming off half-back. Wouldn't be surprised, Kevin. Uh, last week, Anthony Rock did the same task very successfully. McKay had perhaps his worst game for the year with only uh, 12 or 13 possessions. So uh, we'll keep a close eye on that as Camparelli charges them into attack. Well, a couple of possessions for Campo there. And another one. And coming. he's going to get a third. Kick a goal with this. And this is going to be one of the great goals of all time. He got it in the back pocket. He gives it off. That's even better. Whitwell takes the mark. Well done, Scott Camparelli. Well, he turns around. He'll find a player in the goal square. But the umpire's actually called time off. Or it may be time on. One or the other, he couldn't play on. But uh, to have so much poise and to deliver a pass like that after running the length of the ground, phenomenal play by Camparelli. This for the first score of the game. Lance Whitnell. No mistake. Well, it's moments like that that you realise why players have to do just so much running in pre-season. Repetitive 200s, repetitive 100s, and repetitive 400s, because there does come a time in a match where you've just got to really just put the uh, the hard yards in aerobically. And uh, Camparelli has run from the back pocket of one of, at one end to the forward pocket, and he was pretty keen just to just get it away to Whitmore, who kicked a nice goal. Lance Whitnell's bid at 56 goals for the season and Scott Camparelli enjoying his best season with the Blues, averaging 27 possessions. Porter and Fraser. Porter out of the game for virtually two years with knee problems and he relishes his opportunity. Buckley under pressure to Chrisiska. 
Welcome back to Gavin Krasiska, the veteran from 42 games. Fraser McKay hits the ball hard, gets a shove at the same time. Rice, happy to take it over. And look at those Carlton fans. Appreciative of Andrew McKay and also Dean Rice. Two of the tough players in the Carlton defence. Neil Baum, speaking of toughness, one of the toughest players ever to play the game. O'Brien to 50, Burns. Looks like he might have the job on McKay. Orchard had it and lost it. Tied up his camper rally. Caught was Anthony Rocker to Bradley, who will play that loose man across half back. Pumps the ball back to the edge of the centre square. Kuda. Two touches. Caught and taken off the ball too. Taken out of the play and there'll be a free kick. Well, it's the same uh, sort of free kick that uh, Neon Leonard topped at the other end of the ground. So that's uh, pretty well fair enough. But just a couple of other matchups. Gavin Krasiska's with Hamill. Orchard's picking up Camparelli and Franchina is uh, running with Paul Williams of Collingwood. Hamill centres the ball from near the boundary line and Whitmill will have another shot. And it was at an accidental trip. Gee whiz. The umpire for a moment there I thought was going to pay a 50. So I, know this, I know this is only a one-off. But at this stage there's absolutely nobody in the goal square for Collingwood. It's a 30-metre kick. There is just a minuscule chance he scrubs it. He's hit the post. And this time the goal umpire saw that. Not always does the ball hit the post and uh, seen by the goal They umpire. have had a, uh, a very provocative year. Once, one, uh, I think that's about a fair way you could put it. <laughs> Davis to bring the ball in for the Pies. Can't look so dangerous when they go forward. Krasiska. He shares the ball with Davis. Then he's the traffic cop. Gives directions. And there's a good grab taken by Scott Burns. Vice-captain of the Pies. Unheralded player. Made his 100th game last week. Kicks the ball wide and finds Rocker. Needs to play well today. Just to lift the spirits across the half-forward line. Inside 50. Ange Chris too. Those long arms stretching up. Just starting to find some of his best form. Been a revelation the way he has come back in the, the last uh, three or four months of this season. He's uh, He really has come from a player that uh, many expected to retire at the end of last year to one of the stars of this defence. Well, loose players for the Blues. O'Reilly takes it from Bradley. It also came from Dean Rice. Whitnell's going to be the target. Christy Giacomo did well. It's going to be oh. a tough afternoon. Hotton. And Hotton to the goal square. Hamill is there. Not a great kick to the advantage of the side from Hotton and the ball out of bounds. No, spot on, Drew. I, I think that uh, Trent had two or three options and he got caught in between them. The ones to the top of the square where a couple of Carlton players were free would have been more productive. And Gavin Prasiska has certainly come back to uh, make a nuisance of himself. He gave away a free kick to Kuda Fides a while ago. A bit of jumper pulling going on there. Right in front, Beaumont! And he's missed, so Carlton having all the play, but they've only managed one goal so far. Collingwood yet to score. Some easy opportunities missed by the Blues. What a season they've had. 12 straight wins, second on the ladder, 14 and 3. I know Bree's been one of the better pickups, just getting that kick, and he's up against Brett Ratton. The Curia, hands and knees. Dimitina over the top as well. And a ball up on the half forward line for the Blues. The Curia on screen. Has had a very good season. He's averaged 21 possessions. Porter does well. Buckley, Beaumont, his opponent, squeezes the ball along the boundary line, taken over by Ratton. Such a strong midfield, the Carlton side, and a lot of rotation this year too with Franchina through the centre square, also Freeborn, and the likes of Fletcher. Yeah, Bradley, Hickmont, Hamill's even going in there at times. So, yeah. Cooter. <laughs> They've got lots and lots of options. They're sharing it again. Ah, uh, Bradley, wonderful play, sharing it with Beaumont. Look at the kick. Free kick in front, no whistle on the play. Krasiska first back there. He missed it. Oh, a second attempt gets it through. Well, we saw Simon Fletcher leading out there. He would played in that position occasionally last week as well and has done over the last month because he's a very good grab for his size. And uh, sitting there on 
Nick Davis, you would expect that he'd be able to take the ball uh, quite comfortably if it came to a one-on-one -on -one battle. Davis kicks in and clears the 50. At the back, McKee with a four. Oh, oh, gee. And that's the strength players. of Carl. Players like Hickmont just charging in at the football. And they're such an aggressive side at the loose ball. It's been one of the hallmarks of their success this year. Gee, we just asked Mark Porter about it at the he moment. Got it. <laughs> Orchard now is picking up Camparelli and Dimitina now on Bradley. As it was Dimitina on Camparelli after the way the camp has started. Tim's got the hard job now on Bradley. Chris Sisko looks like he's coming off Dipper with the blood rule. Well, he has made a scrap of every contest that he's been in, Gavin Chris Sisko. Mark Waited Porter, a long time. Mark Porter drew uh, is a very athletic looking player, isn't he? I mean, he's a, he's a great build. Now we can see there, that's got when he uh, got that heavy knock from Adrian Hickmott. Hickmott got him twice. But, Banged uh, there and then landed on dropped him. Dropped that one. <laughs> now Michael's moved from the four line to the back line and Wosley's on. Well, James Wosley is very, very quick. I like the way he can really carry the ball. Needs uh, a few more games, of course, to gain a bit of experience and confidence. There's a strong tackle by O'Brien. Chris Sisko will be back on a short. He's just a bit of a scratch on his nose there, so it uh, shouldn't take too long to patch him up. Even though Matthew Allen's out of the side, Jared, uh, great opportunity for Mark Porter to come in and, and get, you know, a run of games leading into the finals. Well, Matthew was the All-Australian Ruckman last year, but... Uh, Hasn't had his best year, and there's a lot of people think that uh, Porter is as good in centre bounces as, as Allen. Not a great hand pass by Cooter, and they've lost it. And Buckley nearly turns it over to Beaumont. Oh, Bradley, clever. Freeborn. Great Bradley, unbelievable there. Freeborn out in front of goal. Fletcher. Fletcher. And that's the point you just made, Jared. It was a good call. Well, it's a better call by uh, Wayne Britton or David Parkman or whoever in the coaching panel over there decided that this was uh, a role for him a few months ago because he's done it particularly well. I've seen him in the last couple of weeks do exactly as he's been asked. It was a great kick, though, to, to set it up. And uh, not sure how many goals he has kicked uh, through the year. It's, it is just 11. Make that 12. Start by the Blues, 2-3-15. The Pies yet to score. And Porter in the ruck. Getting his hands on the ball first. Kuda Foodies with that strength inside that centre square. Orchard parked across half-back. Goes short. He's looking for Wosley, who can set it up to Buckley, to the half forward line. Williams is the target. Bit too much carry on the ball, and no doubt Scotty Burns is playing on McKay just to try and limit that drive across half back. It's not bad for a young boy like Freeborn to come into a side like Carlton, who've uh, done very, very well, and uh, he's had a bit of uh, toughness in this side. Read my mind, Dipper. He's been one of their real pluses this year. Hands and knees to Williams. Just tunnel balls it back to Wosley to Lecuria, so they'll share the ball around Kinney. It's a hurried kick. Inside 50, chance for O'Brien. Should kick a goal if he can win control. Tarrant. Yeah. Just uh, rushed it. There's no need to do that. He just seemed to find himself under pressure when the pressure wasn't there. O'Brien had to run around the umpire. He was shepherded off by the umpire accidentally. So that's uh, the Pies' first score, and it's taken them 14 minutes to get on the board. McKay has it. We'll get so many players free out here on the broadcast side. O'Reilly, one of them. And they play a team plan, and they work it to perfection. Beaumont. That's a poor old kick. Lucky. Ratton. Wide to Franchina. Steers it low. Fletcher again. Good hands. Good hands. It was a great kick too, Drew, quickly through the air. I mean, you see some players who just can't punch the ball through the air as quickly as uh, that kick came from Franchina then. It makes it so much easier for a player to run onto the ball. It comes to him very quickly. It's very hard for a defender. Fletcher for his second. Just gets a tail on it towards the end for a behind. Kosiska's just uh, trying to get back from the problem with the, the blood. Be patching him up, trying to get him out there. But I just wonder, uh, Kevin, this may well be the first time that Nick Davis has ever played at fullback. He would have been playing footy for some 20 odd years. Yes, well, he, he played across half back and kicked a couple of goals early last week against Adelaide, running down to the forward line. What did he start when he was eight months or something? <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> Started in the womb. <laughs> well, well in Craig Davis's household, you would have. Craig had him going very early. <laughs> the face. 
Camberelli from 55 metres out. This is going to bounce through. Wrong side. Camberelli. Just uh, a wry grin. Your training start to, started early in the Davis household. Oh, yeah. Craig, of course, now up in New South Wales doing a uh, magnificent job with John Levy uh, in the development of our game up there. Gee, the kick was a poor one from Davis. Really didn't hit a target. O'Brie pounced on it. Back to Davis. He just stands and delivers and kicks the ball wide where Kudafidis will take the mark. Just in superb touch to Beaumont. He's looking for Whitnell. Just went at his feet. Prestigia Camo has been very good this year. He's rarely beaten in the short kick from Dimitina finds Buckley. Buckley across the ground. Now they're looking to get spare players out on the broadcast side. Lecuria, take a free. I noticed a lot of players today slipping over at the wrong time. Uh, there's a bit of uh, a dew on this grass at the moment. There was Davis up from full back. Anthony had a chance to take the mark, couldn't quite hang on to it. Oh, Franchina. And the Blues turn it over. Oh, great oh, Magnificent jump! Aaron Hamill. Francisco back on, Wesley off. Have a look at this mark by Hamill. Butler. Firm grip. And in the meantime, Fletcher has gone further afield. And Whitnell has taken another mark in the forward 50 and will be lining up for his second. Well, the kick 2-5, the Blues. It's probably luckily, lucky, KB, for the competitive, competitiveness of this match that they've been inaccurate. And that swings back for a goal. Well, I've decided to mark Lance Whitnell's goals very much left of the goals because I've just got a feeling he might kick a, a bag full of goals today because you wouldn't want to be a defender for Collingwood today at the moment in this first quarter with the way the ball is coming in. There's so many easy possessions around 60 to 65 metres, Jared, that it's it's going to be a nightmare for the defenders. Yes, it, uh, well, it could well be a 10-goal hiding. Let's hope it's not. Let's hope Collingwood can get on the board. Two goals to Lance Whitnell, 23 players won. So it's a great start, 3-5 to the Blues. They've missed some easy goals as well. Buckley is always going to work hard inside that centre square. Lecuria floats the ball back. Williams today with his minor, Franchina. Williams does well, he's got three to beat. And Franchina and numbers will always win out. Ratten, Ange Christou on the boundary line, forced over by Scott Burns for a toss back in. Williams didn't do badly there. He did very well. In fact, Tom Hafey, when he was coach of uh, Richmond and Collingwood, and obviously he said the same thing with Sydney and Geelong, that if a photograph's ever taken, he always wants to see more of his team around the ball than the opposition. He would have been happy with that snap. Three against one. Hamill forced under the ball. Clean bowl that time was Lance Whitnell. Bradley does the shepherding. Great pickup. Great tackle by Dimitina. He's forced the ball up. Young Paul has come off the ground and... Uh... Matty Lappin, not replace him in the ruck, but I'm sure he's going down the forward line. A no, bit of a change in the balance. Well, if Malcolm Blight was coaching, he might have gone into the ruck. Yes. Now it'll be Trent Hodden this time around. But you're right uh, with Scott Burns. He's really making life difficult for uh, Andrew McKay. Mansfield and Murphy in the crowd looking on. Played in the early game here. Hickmott towards centre half forward. Kudafidi's a rare fumble. But there is bumped off it. And eventually the whistle goes, and Rupert will get up, feeling, hello, it's a free kick. Goes to O'Brie. There's a solid bump by Ratton. O'Brie takes it quickly. Across half back he goes, just a little bit forward to Burns, Mercuria. Up to half forward now, Michael. Now Michael in between wing and half forward. Kicking half to goal. He's got Tarrant quite take the mark it comes to Bradley good tackle Davis the young and the old of it well done the youngster Kuda now at full forward and in that uh, 73 point hiding earlier on Whitnell kicked five that day and he got three in the last quarter so uh, his graph was on the up at the end of that game and it might continue on the up for the rest of today. And Dipper, there's been a change. Yes, McKee off the ground and uh, young Reese Shaw come on. 
to well, come was, on the ground. Well, he was very impressive last week, Dipper. Reece Shaw just playing his second game. He's very, very quick. He's a beautiful kick. Silvani just weaves his way out of trouble, a rare mistake. Didn't hit his target. Camparelli closed quickly on Davis McKay across half back. What a season he's had. The All Australian half back pumps the ball wide. Bratton sees it over the line. 3 5 23, the Blues. Pies just one behind as McKee there on the interchange bench. Taking a breather, came to the side for Mark Richardson. A breather tackler. And again, forced over. Yeah, Reese Shaw now picking up Matthew Lappin down the four line. So a bit of pace between those two. A couple of young guns on the bench there also for the Blues. Chris Massey. Here's Whitnell in front. Got strong hands in front of Presti Giacomo. Buckley continues to work hard for the Pies. Already he's had eight possessions. The Dimitina, who was good last week. He's playing a handful of games. Thumping kick deep inside 50, looking for Tarrant. Now he's got the free. Got a bit of an arm. A bit more of an arm. Both arms. I think you've got to call that a free. He's been getting away with it for most of his long and distinguished career, so, so <laughs> pretty brave effort by the umpire. <laughs> Here's Chris Tarrant, just 19 years of age, and what a future for this boy. 40 metres out for the Pies' first goal. Right across the face, and out of bounds on the full, so he hasn't scored anything. Disappointing, he's had two shots at goal for just one point. Free kick in, Bathyris has come forward to mark just outside the 50. Now they've all pushed up to one half of the ground here, it's very crowded. Bathyris across in front, Shepherd. and the crowd got him. Eventually McKay had to take the mark, it's whipped out to Freeborn, and can they dash from defence to attack? But there aren't too many forwards, so oh, he had to take the mark, and Hamill did. He's a great kick, is Scott Freeborn. Yeah, he's a penetrating kick. Now Whitnell's got down to the forward 50. Lappin's been there all along. It's going to be Whitnell. Another mark. I think you're right, KB. <laughs> Might need a lot of room for his goals today. Well, Presti Giacomo can't do anything about that when there's so much space on the forward line. Carlton kick 3-5. If they'd been accurate, boy, they could have buried him already. It's a funny old kick, that. And he's another miss. He is off the Steve Kernahan school, though. He's, uh, he's becoming a master of the helicopter mongrel. <laughs> he's just got to try and get the ball to connect better with his boot. Lance Whitnell would be about the only flaw in his game. And Nathan Buckley looked like he went over the line then when he kicked it. Johnson drops a sitter. Hickmott tried to shove the ball out to Hotton. It's been a revelation. There's a throw. And Scott Camparelli. Orchard. To Davis. Always love to see a player run his full 15 metres. Then pumps the ball back towards centre-half forward. Rice, the old firm combined with Silvani. Freeborn, hit hard. Rice comes away from half-back. They use the ball beautifully, the Blues. They're chock full of confidence. 12 games on the trot. They are a well-oiled machine. Rice around the corner. Brave attempt. Rocker. Johnson overran the ball. This could hurt. Lappin just wobbles the ball forward. O'Brien did well. It was a hard take. Hamill can set it up. 35 metres out around the corner. Great snap. was a great snap. Difficult decision for the umpire whether or not to ping O'Brien. He did try to break the tackle, but he didn't have a lot of prior opportunity. As we have another look at this unfold, there's O'Brien. He's just tried to avoid it. I think it was a good decision to call play on because he really didn't have time to assess the situation and get rid of it. But a great snap by Hamill, and you get a feeling that maybe the Collingwood resistance is starting to wane. Oh, they're under siege, this Collingwood defence. Ten scoring shots to one. A rally off and Massey on for the Blues. Rocker on the ball wins down to Michael. Hurried kick by Lecuria. Up towards the 50. 
Dimitina runs onto it. Keeps it out in front. Oh, what a smother by the oldest man in football. Congratulations, Craig Bradley. You are a champion. Yeah, spot on, KB. I mean, Dimitina should have handballed over because Williams was on the run there, but uh, he decided to kick and, and barely made up the numbers. Oh, that is fantastic. Uh, actually, oh, I got goosebumps watching that. Well, he's a magnificent player, Craig Bradley. Tied up on centre wing. Coup de feet, he goes to ground. In fact, I thought that uh, decision there before that you're talking about, Jared, with, with O'Brien was a, a very good one by the umpire. Yeah. I think that uh, just because a player takes the ball, then all of a sudden has to make a split second decision to sort of balk someone that he hasn't really had prior opportunity he's got to have some time to ascertain exactly what he's going to do and i think it should be judged by whether or not he's had time to kick not to give out a lightning handball and if the umpires just interpreted that way then a lot of the problems would be cleared up good point prestigia came used his body well wanting it short is betheris too much carry but he'll find obri across half back he's won so much of the ball this year he's been a good pickup for the pies 23 possessions a game inside the centre square. Scotty Burns will set it up. It wasn't a good handball to Lecuria. Had to stand and wait for it. Kicks a high ball. Tarrant looks dangerous. Also, Heath Scotland. With just 47 seconds left in this first quarter, Collingwood should kick their first goal. Just one of those young boys. Last week, I thought he also showed a fair bit of form. Heath Scotland. Kicked two goals for the season. Just 35 metres out. He's confident. He's kicked it. Well, Collingwood started the year in fantastic fashion. As we all know, they won their first five games and then they uh, went into a huge spiral. But at the end of the season, it's been the the likes of uh, the, the couple of Davis boys that have played particularly well. I know Bree's been a terrific player for them all through the season. Heath Scotland's another talented one coming through. I think there's significant uh, improvement in the side, Kevin, and enough numbers to, uh, to go into the next couple of years with a lot of optimism if you're a Collingwood supporter. Ball back in the middle and that rocker just runs straight at Porter and cleans him up in the bounce. But Carlton won it. Hamill goes down. Buckley lightning to Scotland, the goal kicker. The Curia out wide to Orchard. Buckley again for the second time in the movement. Round the corner to Kinnear. And there's the siren for quarter time. Bit of a relief for the Pies, I reckon. Even though they kicked the last goal, they were pretty comprehensively flogged in the first quarter. Ten scoring shots to two. And if Carlton had kicked something like eight goals too, this game would have been all over already. And even so, it is 23 points the margin in favour. Four six thirty, the Blues one one seven Collingwood, and I think it's a good point that Brad Gotch made. Maybe a bit too cute. Kick the ball long to a contest. Get some players running up hard at the foot of the pack. Really making it. A a contest all the time for Collingwood. I don't know whether they're going to worry Carlton too much with just skill level and trying to chip the ball around. I think that kick from Buckley is a good indication now. They need players really getting to the front of that pack, so they've got a crummer like Lecuria who gives it across the shore and they kick a goal. And I think that way, Jared, they will eliminate a lot of errors in their game. Yeah, look, I think that's a fair point, Kevin. They haven't got the skill level at the moment to uh, be chipping the ball around when a side like Carlton can put them under sustained pressure. As we have a look at this one from uh, Nathan Buckley, just going in long to the high pressure position. And a couple of people at the ground level and at the, the front of the pack have crumbed that. And, uh, well, we saw the result. But I notice that uh, Mark Orchard has gone to uh, the forward line. And, uh, well, he was... Uh, at the start of the match, uh, he was pushing up. No, in fact, that was Burns on McKay. Back in the middle, and Rocker wins it. Actually, the Pies kicked the last goal of the first quarter, the first goal of the second quarter. Because they've got some marking power, Drew, on their forward line with Tarrant and also Rocker and also Mel Michael down there. So if they really contested really strongly in the air, 
they shouldn't be outmarked on a regular basis and therefore you can get guys then at the foot of the pack and it's one way they might just pick up a few goals and get back on some sort of even keel. Kuda just climbed over the top of them and hit the deck pretty hard. Dimitina gets it out. Porter intercepts for Carlton. Now they're under a bit more pressure, the Blues. Rice had to go back to Bradley. He had to float a hand past to Kuda Fides. He's lost control of it. Orchard. Pie's going all right at the moment. Dimitina. Davis round the corner. Leon inside the 50. Rice. Bradley under pressure again. Davis has got him again. Buckley. Williams. This might be another for the Pies. A great goal by Collingwood. Three in a row. Well, it's that old word uh, that is so important in football, and that's intensity. We saw yesterday the Crows come and play in the first half. It was a pretty ordinary performance. Then they lifted their intensity and almost snatched the match down to Shell Stadium. And, uh, well, intensity is what has got them the first two goals of this quarter. Carlton seemingly in control, but then they've been harassed out of it. All of a sudden, with two quick goals, Pies drag it back to 11 point ball game. Yeah, Scotty Burns back in the back line down here. Playing on Fletcher. And uh, Dimitina's good strong play on Kuda Fides just pushed him out of the contest. Albert Conwood in that passage of play, Ratten. Camparelli, those dancing feet, finds a loose freeborn. Is that centre half forward? Whitnell says, kick it to me in the square. I want it one out with strength and bulk. And a goal. He's got three. It's a devastating weapon, the left footer, Scott Freeborn. He can uh, spear the ball in at about 50 metres. Smart play here. I thought that uh, Fletcher was a bit stiff not to get the free kick for in the back, but Camparelli sets him up. And then he's one out in the square. Look at that. It doesn't really go all that high, so it gets there as quickly as possible. And Whitnell just dribbles it across the line. Lance Whitnell's 58th goal of the year. Now Kuda's going up four line, uh, Camparelli moving down and giving him plenty of space up to that four line. Anthony Rocker in ruck against Porter. Hacked out of there by O'Brien. Williams has the spoil put on him by Franchina. Williams comes again. Camparelli, ball spills, Franchina gets the tough one out. Chopped off Grisiska. Davis, Nick Davis goes wide. O'Brien. Up to Buckley, and Bucks has it. Tarrant Kinnear, has a chance as well. Yeah, Kinnear who started on uh, Kuda Fiesa is going back on Kuda now. Kick by Buckley. Pressure by the Pies. Davis, he's run out of room. The ball's out of play. It's going to be a free kick here to Davis, and he's only 40 metres out. He'll be looking to uh, centre this to put it at the top of the square. The Rockers Anthony injured, Rocker boys, in the middle of the line. Thanks, Stepper. And uh, notice Barry Mitchell went straight out to Anthony Kudafidis. So he may be just orchestrating a change. He's done a calf here, uh, Jared. Look, you won't see him back on the ground today, I don't think. That's bad luck. Well, Anthony Rocker being hooted as he goes off the ground. That's what happens to you when you represent Collingwood here at Carlton. But Theorist marks in the forward pocket. He's closer, but... Gee, this ball nearly jammed between the posts if he has a shot for goal. Well, just a few moments ago, Drew, he was picking up Kuda Fides at full back. They made that change with Kinnear, and Batheris has ran all the way up the ground, and without an opponent really knowing that Batheris was making his way into the forward line. Yeah, spot on, KB. That was what I was trying to say before. He, he certainly worked very hard to get that, Mark. Well, good luck, Rupert, trying to kick this one. Well, he might as well have a dash. Toughest shot he's ever seen. Hit the post. Oh, I tell you what, he didn't miss by far. Post out. He had the uh, the right swing on it. It was moving from uh, his left to right. And looked as if it was going to go through. But certainly a swing in the momentum of the game. Blues only lead by 16 points. Porter knocked this on. No, it takes the grab. And that's where Anthony Rocker hurt himself there in that contest with Mark Porter. Kipper seems to think he's maybe he's injured a calf muscle. I, I actually think he was limping before that last centre bounce. Just aggravated him. Davis to Buckley. Now, Jarrett, he just continues to win the ball, Nathan Buckley. Yeah, he's had a stack of possessions already, 13. Finds Lecuria. And I'm just not sure whether Beaumont is uh, the right matchup for him. 
So 36 plays, 20. Mercuria is going to go short and find Scott Burns. So some uh, slack checking that time from Andrew McKay. So all of a sudden the Pies have gone up a cog. He's kicked seven goals for the season, Burns. And has had the job today playing on the half forward line just to try and limit the run of McKay out of defence. Scott Burns from 55 metres, a wobbly old kick. Michael in front. This is where they need Leon Davis. Neon Leon, quick snap. Through for a minor score. Speedy Gonzalez. He reminds me a bit of Jamie Lawson, the Sydney boat. Yep. Who had uh, the unfortunate end of his career when he had uh, a bit of nerve damage to uh, his leg. But what an exciting career he did have when he was up and running. Yep. Oh, Bradley takes it. Gives out the hand pass. McKay didn't take it cleanly, but just kept it going his way. Wide to Hotton. Former Collingwood player against his old side. That was too wide by Andy McKay. So it'll be a throw in near the 50, but Carlton back into attack. 15 the difference, and uh, late in the first quarter, Carlton led by 29. That was before Collingwood got their first goal. Clean possession, Hamill. And pass away. Kudafidis to Caparelli. The disciplined thing out in front. Too high for Beaumont. Agree. From that last line of defence goes wide. Scotland. The Pies' first goal just late in that first quarter finds Burns. He's on centre wing. Looks like McKay's been pushed on to Buckley. This is a far better effort by Collingwood early in the second quarter. Obviously, Nick Moldhouse gave them a real rev up at quarter time. They're more competitive. Whitnell just stands his ground now. He's booted three goals. Now he's playing across half back. Camparelli in space. Hotton runs wide and hard. Presti Giacomo closes too late. Hotton. What a pickup he's been. Beaumont inside 50. Once kicked eight goals and a half against Collingwood. Playing at full forward. Well, Presti Giacomo just made that critical mistake of attempting to spoil but not taking the body with him and he allowed uh, Trent Hotton to get behind him and therefore play on and he set Simon Beaumont up for a very Quick shot at goal since being relieved of the Buckley duties. 45 metres out, Simon Beaumont hammers it home. Well, a good transition of play, and we saw uh, the bloke who started it is currently 15 metres out from Carlton's goal, and he started it 50 metres out from Collingwood's goal. Lance Whitnell pushed down as uh, is the want these days of all forwards in the competition. Some do it better than others. He grabbed the mark and he got the Carlton running machine away. And that's what I was talking about, just with Presta Giacomo. If you're going to attempt the sport, you've got to take the body to ground with you. Good news is that Rocco, you see him on screen, he's been up and down the boundary line. Uh, he's had his lower leg taped around his, uh, his calf area, so maybe see him back on the ground. And Trent Hotton, you mentioned uh, KB. I saw him play for East Burwood last year. Yes, and Alan Richardson, his former, well, former Collingwood, as the coach down there. Kicked by O'Brien, smothered, comes to Camparelli, who continues to win a lot of football. Done it all season. Inside the 50, comes to the front. Free Davis kick. taken out by Lappin. Free kick to Nick Davis. Carlton double Collingwood score, 42 to 21. Batheris. And to the outer wing, and one out contest. McKay. Buckley. And who's being held? Carlton. Advantage. Free kick was to McKay, kick taken by Franchina, to Hotton, to Hamill. Well, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. If Whitnell don't get you, Hamill, Hamill must. <laughs> That's a ripper. Oh, I pinched it. It's an old line um, used about Lillian Thompson. I think it was used about 2,000 years ago, too, somewhere <laughs> along the line, right? <laughs> Young Dimitrin has just uh, changed uh, with Ben Johnson on the bench. Actually, the source of that was Paul Rigby, cartoonist in Western Australia, about Lillian Thompson. This is Aaron Hamill. We're talking football. Missed it. Rock about to come back on. So that calf muscle's healed quickly, Dipper. Yeah, if you have a look at down, uh, if the cameraman could just pick it right down there, there it is there. 
Let's just take that up. Actually, I reckon just got a kick in the shins. I just made that up. That's there, mate. <laughs> you had him written off for life. <laughs> because if he's got a calf muscle, he certainly won't be out there playing because they're very difficult injuries to overcome. Unless There's McKay. The magic, magic tape out there at Magpie Land. Getting the bounce he wanted was Tarrant. Silvani just weaved his way out of trouble to Ratton, the playmaker. The general sets it up. He was looking for Bradley. Prestige Como did well. Gets good support from Burns. Across half back. Great vision to Williams. Ben Johnson wants it by himself on the half forward line. It was great guarding the mark by McKay. Lecuria through the centre square goes wide. It's a wobbly old kick. It'll be two against one. Freeborn, great interception that time. Michael, can he set it up? Does well back to Lecuria. Side steps and side tracks. Freeborn into the pocket and finds Johnson. He did work hard to get this, Ben Johnson. And the loose player was Scotland. Now the ball will come back. He's a player of the future, Ben Johnson. He's uh, he has got real talent. He's very quick and got a very damaging and penetrating left foot. So being a left footer, we expect this from left to right to bend back. He's got it. Well, you uh, called that one spot on, Kevin, as always, and uh, he's just penetrated that, and Scott Freeborn is paying the penalty for a slack-free handball. He just looked as if he had too much time and uh, maybe was just growing a little bit too much in confidence, and that's what uh, unleashed the Magpies. And coming onto the ground now for Carlton, who's uh, young Houlihan, number 33. Well, Mick Malthouse would be very pleased with the endeavour of Collingwood in this quarter. There's no doubt about that. In this quarter, they've uh, kicked three goals to two and certainly made a game of it against the uh, Blues, who are going for their 13th win in a row. Ball comes out wide. Lappin, built like a string bean, but uses his body well. Well played. Centres the ball to centre-half forward. Chris Siska gets as high as he can to punch down. Ratton gives chase. They've got players in support. Hamill. Hamill with penetration. Bradley, just a little bit of a slip by Craig Bradley. Couldn't get there. Taken away by Williams. And the rebound could kill Carlton here. Mercuria over the top. The hand pass didn't reach the target. Camparelli here has run himself into the deck. And Carlton have it now with Beaumont. 60 metres from goal. Kudafides. Well, Kinnear in one out has done all Kuda's right. Kuda's marked it. He's got it. Has marked this. He yeah. knocked it forward about five metres, darted round and grabbed it. Well, I think Kinnear might be asking the question whether there was a shove out there. Because he looked at the umpire. And did, did Kinnear get any touch on it? He looked like he had the first hand on it, but uh, when the crowd yells Kudaman up in front of the Carlton Social Club, pretty tough for any umpire. This body weight just kept shoving Kinnear forward. It's hard to imagine that Kinnear didn't get a touch of leather in there. Kudafidis for goal. And we see, Jared, on the opposite side of the ground to where we're broadcasting from, that look-away handball that didn't hit its target. Mm. That's where Collingwood's getting hurt on the rebound. Well, look-away handballs are... Uh, there it is there. Yep, they are generally a recipe for getting straight to the bench. And it'll be interesting to see whether uh, that happens. But well, that was Williams. Can you afford to bench Williams? Well, three goals down, you've got to set a standard. Josh Frazier back in the ruck now. Rocker off the ground with that uh, suspected injured calf. Well, he didn't look like it at that last ruck duel, did he, Dipper? He went up uh, very tentatively. Ratten around the corner. Whitnell's the danger man. Quick hands. It was a bit too hot coming from Kudafidis. Beaumont from 45 metres out. Great kick, great goal. Well, he's kicked two goals this quarter. And, of course, there was that famous comment, Jared, when he kicked eight in the first yep. half against Collingwood last year when Matthew Allen went up to him at halftime and said, you know Fred Fanning holds a record of 18. <laughs> and he, how many kicks do you have in the second half? <laughs> he kicked another goal. <laughs> Well, he's had a great second quarter, as you say, uh, Kevin. He was 
Well, he was getting beaten badly by Nathan Buckley. He was just picking up kick after kick. And, in fact, uh, that move has worked very well because McKay's clamped down on Buckley. But what a goal that was. Well, two goals in two minutes. Kutafidis and Beaumont. And the Blues back on track. Buckley gets amazing distance from a standing start kick. And a chance here for Tarrant. Silvani's there. Tarrant's got him. Silvani help from Francina. McKay, back to Soss, and a tap over to Rice, kick by Rice looking for Hotton, good mark, oh look at this, what a machine, Chris to to full forward, Hamill from behind, no mark, a scrap at ground level, ball across the 50, Overrun by Fletcher and he's lost it. Reshaw the hand pass. Fraser, Scotland. Chance here for Collingwood. Mal Michael, he's waiting for Scotland to go past. A Carlton player might have. Michael's kick. Tarrant in front, 40 out. And when I say a Carlton player might have, they have been making it about a 23-man game by overlapping so well. And Scotland had the chance then. I didn't really think he... Really put the foot on the pedal. Burns off for Connywood and McGee on, and also Beaumont's off for Culpert for Carlton. Well, there's no chance of kicking eight goals and a half then. Tarrant. Good boy. Well, he's a good player, Chris Tarrant. I think he's going to be a real star player for Collingwood over the next couple of years when he develops and. Just a little bit stronger, but I've seen enough of him this year. He's a hard runner around the ground. Jared, he can cover a lot of territory. He's a, he's a very good mark and yeah. kick, and he can take a, a specky as well. I think if they get the ball down there enough to him, he can kick a lot of goals. I think they also need just one other really big forward so he can become the second option. Curia taking a bit of a breather on the sidelines. But it's been a good quarter by the Pies. They trail 8-7-55 to 5-3-33. Four goals apiece in this second term. A lot more spirit. McKay playing on Buckley now, who's had a lot of the ball so far. 15 possessions in this first half. Lappin. Too far out to score. It's a centering kick. Kuta Fides looks dangerous. Kuta. Try to take a one-hander. The big sigh went around the ground. Hamill brought the ground. Houlihan. Tries to keep the ball alive. Finally taken over the line and a toss back in. <laughs> when champions are going for the ball, you just have to be here to hear it and believe it. The crowd just rose in anticipation that he was going to do something freakish. And that's what's great about the game, isn't it? McKee. It's a strong tackle by Hamill. A ball up. Stephen O'Reilly also on the sidelines. Ball up, 45 metres out. From Carlton's goal, McKee doing the ruck work. He's coming to the side, replace Mark Richardson. Kuda Fides from 45, a centering kick. Whitnall's the target. Big fist away from Prestige Como. Strong play, it's always a sign of strength. Porter tried to crash his way through. McKay, 45 metres out, he's missed. Well, he had a, had a full head of steam up there, Andy McKay, as uh, Whitnell brings the ball to ground. A smash by uh, Preston Yacoma. It was great work. Porter came through. McKay was looking for an option. But in the end, he just had to slam it on the boot. Kick in. Well done by Houlihan, who had his back to the ball and spoiled. And in for the ball again. Terrific play. Centering kick. Whitnell jammed underneath it. Oh, Williams goes backwards. Didn't get it far enough. And the ball is helped through eventually by the theorist for a behind. The doctor's gone out to uh, see young McKee's hand then out there. He's OK. That young Houlihan there, he was very good. Youngster playing in just his sixth game. Here goes Scotland for Collingwood. Inside the 50. Michael. Traps. Johnson. Hand pass intercepted by Franchina. Jono's got it again. Well done. And pass in. Davis. 
Look, Scotland absolutely creamed the oncoming traffic. And the umpire seen a free Carlton's way. And it's going to Franchina. He's been one of the players who have taken Carlton to the next step. Can put players out of business, can rotate through the centre square as well. Poor kick. Half slipped. O'Brien. Didn't really hit a target. Buckley just continues to win the ball. A bit of magic from Nathan Buckley. Chipping in is O'Reilly. Johnson just caught under the ball as well. Fletcher. Transfer a play towards the outer side of the ground. Finds Colpert. Young man from Castlemaine to Ange Christou. Coming down from halfback. Starting to really find some form. Those strong hands there of Lance Whitmore. Out in front. How many marks, Jared, for Lance? He's uh, taken the seven. Handy. Very handy day. He, he just continues, doesn't he, to take marks and runs all over the ground. He's already booted three goals. He's one of those players that about halfway through the third term, he's, he's got five goals and yep. 12 marks. And he's very much a uh, creator as well. He, he gets, uh, he would get plenty of statistics for assisting in the creation of goals. Oh, nearly another mark to Whitnell, but he was on the small of his back and gave the ball away to McKay. Silvani played it like an egg. Well, great disguise, Stephen. He's trying to get the ball out like crazy, and he doesn't want it to come anywhere. <laughs> Oh, that is experience for you. Anthony and Paul Lecuria. Eight, nine to five goals, three. And the Pies have made a game of it in the second quarter, no doubt about that. O'Brien just inside the line, gains about 35 metres. And more. Oh. Make it 40 metres. Hick might come on off uh, for the Blues. And young Chris Massey. Stephen having a bit of a hard blow there. Four goal margin to the Blues. And for the majority of this quarter, they've been able to just shut down the, the free running of Carlton and a lot of loose players that were there in the first quarter. Good to see Gavin Krasiska attacking the ball, playing the ball on its merits. Orchard, the run through by Krasiska. Great to see the kick's a poor one. Taken by Fletcher, who firstly started at full forward, kicked an early goal, Camparelli. Gavin Krasiska. Great to see, isn't it, Jared? Because this is his first senior game for the year, 242 games coming into today. Oh. His kicking might be just starting to let him down a little bit. Kinnear to Wosley, runs smack bang in a roadblock in the shape of Anthony Kutafidis. Yeah, it's a great decision. He had no chance to get rid of it. And the crowd's uh, up in arms, wanting a free kick but uh, just not a significant prior opportunity what about Wozley? he looked around and the Adonis was about to clean him <laughs> up <laughs> Fraser and Kuda just forces the ball forward it was a clever kick by Johnson Collingwood certainly got more numbers now around the ball tell you what Drew in uh, days gone by he was probably lucky it wasn't the likes of Stan Magro or uh, some other such back pockets coming the other way <laughs> absolutely Josh Fraser. Got his hands on the ball first. Ratten in close. Rugby Union scrum. Firstly, a fresh air shot. Fletcher keeps the ball alive. McKay running with the flight. Kept his eyes on the ball. Stressed Tried to it. pinch it. Whitnell, big frame over the ball as well. Buckley shares the ball around. Krasiska tries to hug the boundary line. Massey, high ball back towards centre half forward. Hamill. And great shepherding by uh, Matthew Lappin as well on the way through, and he should get rewarded. Ratten across half forward. Fletcher has the spoil put on him. He recovers well. Taps Houlihan. Houlihan. Goalwards. Terrific stuff. Magnificent goal. Ryan Houlihan, most of the day on the bench, and getting a goal within about eight minutes of his appearance. And he was pretty pleased with the result. He did a lot of hard work, but uh, Matthew Lappin set it up for him, shepherding out for the uh, Carlton mark, but then through came the youngster. And Ryan Houlihan, after a lot of hard work getting through some heavy traffic, got a good goal on the board. Carlton by 30 points. They led by 23 points at quarter time. Lance Whitnell has booted three, Simon Beaumont two, 
and for Collingwood, just four singles to Williams, Tarrant, Reese Shaw, Johnson and Scotland. Hotton playing against his old side, Orchard, trying to pinch it. Scotland kicks a high ball to the half four line, Rice with just too much strength, too much experience at this stage for Leon Davis. He's had a terrific season as Rice. And there he finds Kudafidis. On the edge of the centre square, Bradley's on a lead. Can't take the crumb. Clean bowl was Josh Fraser. Hot in the tackler. Ties up Orchard. Yeah, Deva, what's uh, happening with Anthony Rocker? He's, uh, he's got a strained calf muscle, has he? Because he seems yeah, he's to be been just... up and down, Jared. Uh, up and down the boundary line. They're just trying to get him on the ground, but it doesn't look good for, uh, for Anthony and all the Collingwood uh, supporters. I reckon he might be sitting out the rest of the game. It makes them pretty small. They came into the game without Mark Richardson. Uh, they dropped Zav. So uh, with Anthony out of business, here's Nick Davis through the middle. Good spoil put on by Chris. Who comes to Franchina. Rice, sandwich. And the umpire will ball that up. Well, the way he's moving up and down the boundary line here, maybe they could just put him in the goal square and uh, hopefully just get those long kicks in there because um, he won't be able to play on the ruck or on the ball. And you'd reckon if they played him at full forward, the uh, fullback would have a field day. He'd be running off, so he's probably, as you say, finished for the game. But just Collingwood looked good there with Nick Davis charging through and going long and direct to that forward line. Michael did well. A high ball by Scotland. Hasn't gone anywhere. Knocked out by Kinnear. Comes to Buckley. Bucks is still in with a show. He's got it. Top of the goal square. Well played, but Theris. Theris drifted forward, had a shot for goal from an impossible angle earlier on and hit the post. This is a certain goal on the siren for half time. And they've stymied the Blues. They were going to get beaten by 100 points at about the 20 minute mark of the first quarter. And since then they've levelled up. It's 9 9 to 6 3. Yeah, good quarter by Collingwood. They've kicked the five goals, as you said, Drew. And uh, whilst Carlton still kicks some as well, they, uh, they just put a lot more effort into their. Uh, man-on-man -man contests and uh, as a result they got themselves on the scoreboard but Anthony Rocker looks like he's finished for the afternoon so it wasn't a memorable battle for him but uh, some of his smaller teammates have been far more competitive in this term. Yes and uh, for Collingwood they just uh, lost a point that quarter they started 23 points down they finished 24 points down so I think Mick Mulder has to be pretty happy with the fact that after quarter time I think Drew you hit the nail on the head there because it did look like they might have been in for a pounding in that second quarter. So it's only a, 30, a 24 point margin, 9-9 nine, nine to 6 goals, 3 at half time. Start of the second half here at Optus Oval and Porter wins but Buckley sharks it. He's up to about 20 possessions, Nathan Buckley, in half a game of footy. Rice. Well, picked up. But Collingwood have it. Buckley again with distance on this kick. One out contest, Michael. Oh, but Silvani got back to help Christo, and Silvani rushes it behind. So if that was a hip injury, he's still uh, running it out pretty well. And Dean Rice just trying to pinpoint the pass through the eye of the needle a little bit too much. I uh, thought Carlton fell into that trap a little bit in the first uh, part of that second term. So we'll see if they play a little bit straighter football in this second half. Carlton lead by 23 points. That was the margin at quarter time. Kick tumbled short. Went to Fletcher to Hickmott. Who found himself on the interchange bench in that first half. Camparelli tries to work the ball towards Beaumont. It does well. Back to Franchina. Short kick. Smart and kick. Finds Lappin. He pulled it just uh, as he was about to uh, really launch it. And kicks the ball out in front and taken by Trent Hotton. That's how they played in the first quarter too, Jared. They had this open forward line, moved in very quickly. And of course, uh, Lance Whitnell kicked a couple of goals. He's kicked three for the game. And Hotton, who's been, he's been just a fantastic Great picker. Great recruit, hasn't he? Shooting from 45 metres out, Trent Hotton. Can he bend it back? He does. Rams at home. Yes, he's been one of the recruits of the year, Kevin, and uh, I guess Shane O'Sullivan take a bow because he's the recruiting manager here at the Blues and 
Well, recruiting managers, always uh, they're always rung up on talkback radio and uh, bagged if they get one wrong, so I reckon they should be able to cop a rap on the back if they get one right, and he's certainly with him and Scott Freeborn added to this side. Uh, he's got a couple of uh, beauties, and they may even orchestrate a flag through their recruitment. So Collingwood had the first shot for goal in the second half, kicked it behind. Well, actually, it was a rush, and then Carlton... Get the first goal. Back in the middle. Porter with a long run up on Fraser. Cooter feed his lightning hands. Ratten a bit of a fumble, then a toe poke. But Theris chops it off. Through Fraser and O'Bree and Krasiska. They've lost ground in possession, the Pies. Davis. Nick Davis out wide. Johnson chasing with Fletcher. Steve McKee's gone to full back on Trent Hotton. He played a match in about round four or five in fact it may have been against the uh the blues earlier in the season where he was uh center half back center half back and he was he was one of the best players on the ground in fact it may well have been against essendon and uh he had a fantastic match there pies didn't win the game but uh he was uh, certainly one of their best players well, can hear with those long arms. Marks. well it's a it's going to be a test for him playing at full back which is a little bit different than playing at centre half back because there's a ruckman off on there just cruising around yep, centre half back but out. that last line defence makes it difficult. Krasiska thumps the ball down he's looking for Tarrant wants a kind bounce. Silvani's his shadow closing quickly was Johnson with Fletcher puts it back over the line. And Heath Scotland on the interchange bench start up proceedings for the Pies by kicking their only goal late in the first quarter or Scott Heathland as he was called recently. <laughs> by curls that's the South Australian version Camparelli to Beaumont kicked a couple of goals in the first half inside the centre square Whitnell Christy Giacomo is stuck to his guns he's the consummate defender and finds Reece Shaw who's got a lot of talent started on the bench today but is a player of the future too far out the score he's got Johnson on a lead Tarrant also cruising. He's taken a lot longer than any full backs able to. And just wobbles the ball forward. Makes it very difficult. Mel Michael. The big fist came from Silvani. They need a crummer. Good play by Tarrant. The Johnson should kick a goal. It's missed. One goal, one to Ben Johnson. Collingwood need to make these goals. Craig Bradley, what a marvel. Because if they actually kick, you know, those sorts of goals, Drew, sometimes you can catch the opposition out. Carlton might be just in cruise mode just at the moment, then all of a sudden you lose a mm -hmm. bit of the threat of the game, don't you, Jared? And well, they've got the big game against the yeah. Bombers coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time, so there. I guess there is that tendency when you're that far in front of another side as far as skill and experience is concerned, just to take the foot off the pedal. Bit of a shepherd behind play. Chris Siska has thrown his body around today. He's Relish being back into the senior side. And the ball is pinned in there in the tackle by Nick Davis. They're yeah. saying that, uh, Jeremy Nesson, and they've shown no mercy, are they, really? They're uh, finishing off sides very well. But I just feel in today's game where Carlton uh, are in control, leading by 28 points at the moment, but they're just, I think, off the boil a bit at the moment. OK, running goalwards. Not a bad snap, just left. And a behind. Just doing enough, Kevin. Yeah, just doing enough. And if Collingwood can kick a couple of quick goals, then the confidence rises in young players. They take a few risks, get a few balls bouncing your way, and then all of a sudden, you just might catch a side out. When was the last time the Blues lost out here? Uh, they've won their last 10 games here. McKee. Got his hands on the ball. Kinnear. Start the game on Cooter Fittis. Have to be quick. Hamill. Chased hard. The ball is kept alive. Silvani just pushes off Tarrant. Then sets it up to McKay, who made the numbers, to Camper Rally. A playmaker across half back. A beautiful kick finds Lappin. So Carlton players running forward, and the loose player is Hotton. Kudafudi is getting back to the square. Whitnell on a lead. That's been ignored. Hotton fancies his chances. 55 metres out. Big kick, stands and delivers. Big kick. Big goal.
Well, wouldn't that aggravate a few Collingwood people who got rid of Trent Hotton because of his nighttime activities? Yes, he said. We're not talking about his performance at Waverley at night either, <laughs> Drew. But, uh, well, he's just come to a club and he's uh, settled down into a, in a very uh, professional football environment. And he's probably matured a fair bit as a young man himself. And, uh, well, that was a great shot of a good goal. What a skill to be able to kick the ball that well over a distance. Porter uh, beats Fraser. That's nearly worth a kick, but Hamill is wrapped up by Krasiska. It's almost gone out of football. The big punch. Yeah. And it was fantastic to see. There's a, I know Lee Matthews thought that Bo McDonald a couple of uh, weeks ago when they were getting belted by North Melbourne was trying to just finesse the ball instead of getting up above and doing what Damien Burke and, uh, well, Ruckman through the age of it. Just crunch it forward if you get a chance. It's quite team lifting too, and uh, if you can bash it outside that centre square and players running onto the ball, it's a good point you make. I suppose everyone's trying to be too cute these days. Well, everyone jumps early, and uh, very difficult to launch the football if all you're trying to do is win the high jump. Three interchange, running the boundary line for Collingwood, except Anthony Rocker who was uh, not amongst them, so you wouldn't think he'd be back. Good Carlton answer. have it. Lappin, back to Beaumont. Good running. And a centering ball. Cooter comes late, but McKee stood his ground to take the mark. McKee, a last-minute inclusion for Mark Richardson. Orchard takes the mark outside defensive 50. Up to centre wing. Great running, Tarrant. Boy, did he sprint for that. That's what he's good at doing, Drew. Covers a lot of territory. Reminds me a lot of Nick Holland of Hawthorne can run all over the ground. Got good fitness. And McKee has been handy back in defence. He's just added a little bit of height. You can see a lot of players now with Carlton flooding virtually Collingwood's forward line. There's no Carlton player centre of the centre. Porter. Camparelli. He's got Cooter breaking wide. And Cooter Feedy's good call, Jared. Just wants a kind bounce. He'll trap it. Then Carlton players run back to the open spaces like Hotton has done. He's kicked two goals in this third term. Running hard also onto the ball is Rice. Now he's come down from the back pocket. What a career it's been. Started at Geelong, went to St Kilda, came to Carlton, knee reconstruction. He's had two. Resurrected his career, premiership player. Now enjoying probably... Some of the best form of his career. And Hotton, has he got the mark? No. Toss it back in. A wry smile. Let's have a look. Pretty good purchase on the ball. I would have thought the body pressure from McKee made the ball spill out. McKee takes the front position. Wosley got his kick away to Orchard. Still at half back. So the Pies are hanging in. They trail by 35 points, 11-10 to 6-5. Tarrant's got to come a long way down. Beaumont squeezed on the boundary line. Dances around his opponent. Belts the ball back inside 50. Hamill! Again McKee with those long arms. Davis on the charge. Backs himself in. Comes away from half-back. Leon Davis. Leon Leon. He's been dubbed. He looks quick. He looks dangerous. Oh. Michael, he's got to make it a contest. Great, Mark Great mark taken by Fletcher. Gee, you mentioned about his strength of marking before, Jared. Yeah, no, he's a very good mark, and he's one of those uh, old-fashioned wingmen, Kevin, that are uh, pretty tall but so athletic, but brilliant in the air. What a cut the system, getting men free down the outer side. Hickmott pokes it over to Lappin. Even Wozley's pace couldn't close the gap. And Brett Ratton's been free for about 10 minutes. And he'll probably be rewarded. No, he's not. Good. Into the centre corridor. Hamill makes a contest again. Comes down to Presti. He's cornered. Oh, dangerous kick. And eventually out of bounds. Pushing the back. He was he led with his elbow there. Eh? He was stiff because he just slipped in the finish. Lappin takes it quickly. Franchina, almost a terrific mark. Hickmott centres the ball. Whitnell's there. And Kuda! <laughs> What an athlete, Kuda, put him in the Olympics. Hamill, good hand pass, Lappin, nail this down for a goal.
Well, I reckon Kuda could nearly win the triple jump in Sydney without taking a hop and a step. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, be dis he'd be disqualified, Drew, if he did that. Yeah, I think that actually, he may get disqualified from that, but win it in the long jump. <laughs> Blues have doubled Collingwood score 12, 10 to 6, 5, 82 to 41. There's a great aerial shot. Center bounce. Porter. Ratton ties it up. Big We've noticed uh, Chris Tennant's off the ground, boys, so with a right corky at the moment, so he's just getting that looked at. So another big man off the ground for Collingwood. Andrew Dimitina looks like he's coming back on. Anthony Rocker's off with a shin injury. Porter doing well at the bounces. Bradley brought down. So the ball will come back and the skipper. Look out for the Cuda man. Cuda's in the square. He's got Kinnear as his opponent. Goes short. Finds Freeborn. There's a very good kick. Yeah, this is kickable, uh, KB. Or else right on the line, Cuda. From a standing start. It's to the square. Cuda feed is at the back. No. High flyer was hot. Loose ball. Danger here for Collingwood. Lappin. Hickmott. A centering kick. Ratton. <laughs> well, it was great play by Hickmott because he didn't try for the impossible goal. He just centered the ball. And Ratton having the, the jump here on Williams was just poleaxed him. Well, Williams is not well. Well, he'd be stiff because a... <laughs> Brett Ratton hasn't been noted as a high jumper. The big grabs. That's his first goal of the game. Well, that was a pretty good mark, uh, given that he's half an opportunity. And I reckon Craig Bradley would be saying, well, mate, you finally featured in mark of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, this uh, was a very nasty knock that Williams also got in the back. This is the full body weight coming forward and the knee really has crunched him here. A wonderful mark by Ratton and a follow-up goal. So they've kicked four goals in this quarter and Collingwood have kicked just two behinds. Williams is back on his feet, back in the middle, but Carlton have it. Beaumont's kick deep inside the 50. Whitnell with Presta Giacomo. Hamill on his feet. And accidentally he's socketed it out on the full. Well, Presta Giacomo is, I think, one of the most underrated defenders in the competition. He's playing on Lance Whitnell who is a, a fabulous player. And the focal point in a side that is absolutely dominating. And uh, he had three goals kicked on him, two in the first quarter, but gee whiz, he, he really does stick to the task. Kick by Orchard. Oh, good mark by Porter. And quickly on with it through Massey. Camparelli. Good distance with that kick. Hamill well placed. Orchard front of the pack. Presty again to McKee. Collingwood building from defence. And Lecuria still deep in the back pocket. Just to the 50 now, where Kinnear takes the mark. Well, he struggled to get a game, Gavin Krasiska, this year, but I think he's been OK in defence. Well, there's been a lot of Collingwood supporters demanding his inclusion in the side, but uh, with Gavin Brown in, I think the policy has been that uh, it wouldn't slow them up too much, but he's been good today. Well, he puts his body on the line. He's got the experience. There it is. He got his fist to the ball there. Hamill couldn't take it on the second grab. Tried to crash his way through. Camparelli will kick a goal. Honestly, Aaron Hamill attacks the ball with a ferocity that you rarely see. He's got a real presence, uh, Drew. And it's a good point that you make because he can run, he can jump, he's quick. He's a good tackler. But he's one of those players who demands the ball. And the lead is now blown out to 53 points. So Collingwood, they've uh, had some injury problems, but they've just got to get the ball forward. And Nathan Buckley has gone to the goal square. To so number five. So he gets an opportunity. Well, Collingwood haven't managed a goal in this quarter, and Carlton have added five goals one. So they're starting to get the hiding that they were looking like taking in the first quarter. Kudafidis to Beaumont, 
spirals it to the 50. Whitnell wants a kind bounce. Wants Bradley. He's got Bradley. Well, he turned the wrong way, Bradles. In a bit of trouble. Wasley for Collingwood. Well done, Whitnell. Prestige Como to help out. Close to the line. Not close enough. It's over. Mick Malthouse. Well, he must have wondered what was going on earlier in the season. They won their first five, but since then they've won just one. Comes to the front to Ratton. He might kick it himself. Gets his second. See, Presti G came out before. What a young player's got to realise that. Watch Mighty McMartin, how he plays, coming out of defence there. He wouldn't have attempted to go for that short pass to the boundary line. He would have kicked it 50 metres, 55 metres, as far as he could, to the empty space here on centre wing, and happy to see the ball roll over the line for a boundary throw in somewhere on centre wing. Correct. And Presti Giacomo trying to make something out of nothing. Comes with experience. Got to get a lot of players pushing up at the fall of the ball, Collingwood. So they've just got to learn a little bit of hard running. Porter thumps the ball again. He's wound back the clock. Today's of old. Beaumont from the centre square. Hamill and chipping in his Whitnell. Sorry, he said. Had my name written on it. It would be a nightmare being a Collingwood backman in this quarter. And listen to the uh, applause for Porter. And some of his hit-outs in this third quarter have been worth a kick. And Jared, you just love them. Well, I reckon it's uh, a fantastic way to approach the ball in the centre as Whitnell goes back and, uh, well, fix. this has become a cake ball. He's got four. And I guess it's the cake walk that most people expected coming to the ground, but... Uh, it's been a magnificent third quarter by the Blues, and I think if you wanted to analyse, that's fantastic stuff by Porter. Matthew Allen is the man with the job in front of him. He's the All-Australian Ruckman of last season. And uh, we well, think he could only strengthen this side, but they will ask themselves a the question, is there room for two Ruckman in this side? Well, Collingwood did block up the Blues for pretty much all of the second quarter but this could be a hundred point flogging yet Camparelli Whitnall first touch and second a mark and for all of Prestigia Como's raps today uh, this bloke has just marked the ball in contests in the forward 50 a hell of a lot of times the name of that fat farmer from Queensland <laughs> did him the world of good 45 out but unfortunately they don't teach you how to kick a footy up there at that fat farm that was disappointing it was a health farm wasn't it yeah. <laughs> it looks like the Carlton camp there it's pretty dark in those coaches box but that was David Parkin Wayne Britton Chris Siska goes wide McKee's got to make a contest Aubrey, he's happy to see the ball trickle back over the line. 107 to 41. Just two behinds this quarter to Collingwood. And so far, 44 points in this quarter. So it's 44 to 2, the Blues. So it's been just a magnificent play by Carlton. Looking for 13 wins on the trot. Williams comes away. He's had a tough day with Franchina being his bodyguard, Mel Michael on the burst, he's going to take him on with some great chasing oh, can he set it up to Dimitina he'll have to be good, McKay just crunched him down it was a strong tackle and Beaumont rockets the ball wide to Freeborn who's got the run coming through of Massey young man wanting to impress as well to Bradley around the corner McKee again's got to come out hard as the tall option down there for the Pies. Make certain there's no strong marks. Kuda Fiddy's on hands and knees. Orchard burrows in after the ball. Fraser tries to keep it alive. Didn't hit a target. Hot and can goes to Houlihan. The run of Camparelli through the centre square. So they've backtracked. Conceded ground out in front is Whitnell. Brilliant kick by Camparelli. And for a minute or two we saw the same pressure from Collingwood. 
that got them back into the game in the second quarter, but it's just been missing for most of this mm. term. Mal Michael and Silvani about 100 metres away having a bit of a, an argument and drew the attention of the emergency umpire. Whitnell from 50 metres out. This is a big kick. He has drilled it. He's got five. Well, I think I said Jared early in the game, he's one of those players, Lance Whitnell, you'll look at his stats halfway through the third term and he'll take 12 marks and have five goals next to his name. Well, you were, uh, you were well out. He's had 10 marks and he's kicked five goals three. <laughs> so spot on, KB. He's just an enigma, is Lance Whitnell. Just keeps working away, doesn't he? Once again, you see the ball from the blimp. Adrian Hickmott preparing to come back on for the Blues. And Buckley back into the middle of the ground. The, the experiment going forward was really not given any opportunity to work because they haven't had the ball in their forward 50 with him there. 72 points, the margin. Michael and Silvani collars him again. Free kick to Michael. There's been a bit going on between these two. Michael quickly by hand to Burns. Great kick, Nick Davis. So can Collingwood get a goal in this quarter? So far, they've managed just two behinds. He'll have to kick from outside 50. It's left and short. All Carlton, Cooter. Cooter, Cooter, Cooter. He can do anything. Triple jump and pole vault. And he hasn't even gone into the pole vault without a pole. And signed checks. Yeah, the five million dollar man. Buckley. And he breaks the drought. First goal for the quarter for the Pies. Well, it's interesting, Nathan Buckley. People, some people try to... Uh, discount his abilities because he's playing in a losing side. Well, if Nathan Buckley was playing in the Carlton side, he would kick eight goals a game. Maybe that's overstating it a little bit, Kevin, but you would just love to see a player unencumbered, a player set free with his ability, playing with good players around him. Made a blue game from Brisbane to Collingwood, didn't he? Well, free that's born. the way it's worked out at this stage. Just saw Freeborn on the interchange bench, so just rotating some of their players, smaller players through the midfield onto the bench. O'Reilly taking his turn in the ruck. Here is Buckley. Just kicking a goal. Now strutting his stuff inside the centre square. Lappin, they paid advantage. Francisca's going to get back body on body. Look at the fly! Hotton! Well, he's going for his third goal of the quarter. He must have carved him up when he played with East Burwood. <laughs> Be cruel. <laughs> But it's, it's great to see a person who has been given the, the short shift from a club who then goes back and plays in a lesser competition, plays well enough to be picked up and then come back into the big time and play as well as what he has. So he's resurrected his career and he's kicked three goals in the third quarter. Yeah, it's a great grab and uh, he's had a very good quarter and it's one of the great footy stories uh, his resurrection as a player as you say eyes on the ball all the way and he just takes it uh, pretty well had a nice soft landing too on Krasiska well they've kicked nine goals in the term, the Blues, and they make it a 10 goal quarter. We've seen a couple of 11 goal quarters this season. Kangaroos just last week. Reese Shaw, Uncle Tony back in the game day studio. Reese wearing Uncle Tony's number 22. Some of the Blues who can't get a game in this lineup at the moment. Michael Mansfield there in front in the blue shirt. There's a bit of a buzz around the ground at the moment. It's actually pretty quiet, just a murmur. There's another hit up the ground worth a kick. Culpit. 
playing his first game for the season. Worked very well, gets it going forward. Kuda Fides! Kuda Fides! And all the praise for young Culpert playing just his seventh AFL game. Boy from Castle, Maine. Well, he won this football well, but I just question whether there wasn't a full a push in the back to uh, Nathan Buckley. <laughs> I would say so. I would have thought that was a pretty obvious free kick for the umpire that was four metres away. Not going to impact on the result, but you're still going to pay him. Terrific skills there by Kudafidis onto the left side. Just absolutely drilled it, but a free kick certainly should have gone to Nathan Buckley. Well, it's been a 10-goal quarter to Carlton. Ten goals to one. I suppose with one side sitting second on the ladder, 14 and 3, 12 straight. And Collingwood, of course, have won only one game in the last 12. It's probably the scoreline that we came to expect. But Collingwood were pretty brave in that first half, particularly the second quarter. Lappin from the half forward line is oh. a loose play. This is Kuda Fides. He's going to run in. He should kick his third goal. No. And he has missed. And full marks to Obri because he kept putting some pressure on Kuda Fides. It was just caught in two minds, wasn't he, Jared? Whether they go back for the kick or whether they play on. Yeah, he knew he was coming in, closing in fast. And because of that, he rushed Pulled his it. shot. And uh, well done to Shane O'Brien. Dock him a million for that, I reckon. Four million dollar man. Chris Siska told to play on now to the 50. Burns. Collingwood shell-shocked in this third quarter. The Blues have given them both barrels. McKee. Kick dropping a bit short. Maybe the Pies can get one before the siren. Shaw. Kick smothered. There's a free kick off the ball here to Nathan Buckley. Yes, the umpire not in charge of the action. Darren Goldsby has Colbert. against Culpert. Yeah, that's good umpiring. The bloke's being grabbed off the ball. Player like a Buckley who looks like he's got a scratch on the eye. And he's got to be paid. Well, maybe it's uh, half a bit of a square up from what happened a minute ago. Now Bucks has a chance to kick a goal out of it. But he's kicked a shocker. One of the worst kicks of his career. And young Culpert taking right up to Nathan Buckley. There in the background it's happening. Just hanging on. That's great camera work picked up by... Now, cameraman here at Optus Oval, you can see Buckley there was, was hung on to, Beaumont. And it's great umpiring too, Kevin. I, I think a lot of time umpires haven't paid those because they're not in the play, but it's still got to be paid to those players. Absolutely. Bradley's going short to Hickmott. He finds him. Now, the time clock is ticking away, and Bradley says, take your time and have a shot. Unawares that there's just 15 seconds to go, and the time clock is counting down. Uh, they think this will be an 11 goal quarter. Reece Shaw just goes to the bench. So the siren may even sound before he takes his kick. After the siren for 11 goals for the term. Hickmont bangs it through. Well, that is champagne football. And it's French champagne by the Blues. What a quarter. And if there hadn't been a team called Essendon in this competition, you'd be saying, how far the Blues? Well, I think the Blues are a real chance against the Bombers. I think they can match the Bombers in most areas. That will be some game round 20, and of course they'll meet in the finals as well. Mick Moldhouse comes down. He would have been very disappointed with that. They were so brave in that second quarter. But at three-quarter time, Carlton lead 132 to 48. Final quarter at Optus Oval, the last suburban game between these two sides. 20 goals, 12, 132. Collingwood, 7, 6, 48. That's an 84-point lead to Carlton after leading by 24 points at halftime. Well, the onslaught just continued. Lappin down towards the man of the moment, Whitnell, to the skipper, Bradley, kicks a goal! Well, they've just complimented the champagne with a dose of caviar as well. Well, at half time, you would have thought that Wayne Britton would have uh, 
said to his players, we got the shellacking in round three. It was one that was embarrassing for the club. There's only one way to uh, rectify that, and that is to return the favour and uh, throw in a bit of interest as well. And I guess at this stage, the interest is uh, starting to pile up. 90 points lead the Blues. What a job Wayne Britton has done. He's the man who does the match day planning. David Parkins in the book as officially as coach. Well, Porter had a couple of cracks at getting that out with a big one. Rat in the underground hand pass was clever. McKay at full stretch. Hickmott up the ground to Culpit. Hot and again. And a pat on the head for Culpit. Heath Culpit playing his first game for the season. Involved in a few passages. Hasn't seen all that much match time. And Hotton kicked three goals in the third term. The margin's nearly 100. And with the trend of the game at the moment, it could be 150 by the end. And hasn't Trent Hotton given them such great flexibility? Matthew Allen goes off the ground, or uh, at this stage, Mark Porter. Hotton goes on. He can interchange with Anthony, with uh, the Cooter man. And uh, they can just throw them around willy-nilly. And that's why they're going to be more than competitive in a couple of weeks' time against the Bombers. Blues by 96 points. It would be interesting to uh, plot a graph, Drew, from the Millennium game, which you called, through to... Collingwood's uh, win over Carlton and to where they are at the moment in terms of turnarounds. Well, three games this season. Carlton by, what, uh, 80, 98, was it, in the Millennium game? Then Collingwood by 73 in round three and Carlton, whatever they win by here today. So where Collingwood pulled out that 73-point win from, I have no idea. Yes, it was a costly uh, loss by the Blues uh, for many people, many of their major supporters. But uh, I guess Brendan Favola, an interesting graph for him, who kicked 12 goals in that, that match. And he, uh, well, there were many suggested he was going to be on the, the boil and uh, on the roll of kicking 100 for the season. But as is often the case, he's back in the reserves and he's just uh, trying to re-establish himself and truly learn his craft. Well, from that round three match to where we stand right at this moment in the game, the start of this last quarter, it's a 169-point turnaround. 22 goals, 12. The Blues, 144. Collingwood, 7-6, 48. Fraser. And the Blues have turned it around uh, as a side as well. Kuda was a centre-half back in those days. Now he's one of the, uh, the great centremen, midfielders, forwards of the competition. Now he's everywhere. Ratton does the shepherding. Hotton's going for goal number five. A red letter day for Trent Hotton. Trent Hotton was a discard in round three. Now he could be an integral part in the premiership side. And now the margin is over 100. And the crowd has realised it. And it's almost like a batsman waving his bat. The century's up. Blues have kicked three goals in four minutes to start this final term. And unless Collingwood can put a break on them, Craig Bradley sitting down, Neil Baum, football manager at the Pies, what do you do? Porter just taken by the arm by Fraser. It comes to Kuta Fides. Inside the 50, deep. Hamill hits it like a Sherman tank. Prestigier Como. Yep, gone. Houlihan, another one. Two for Ryan Houlihan. Well, it's got more, to, more than floodgates now. It's a raging torrent that can't be stopped. Four goals in six minutes. And two goals to Ryan Houlihan. Those fine young players, Carlton's just got on the sidelines. Mm. 
Well, it's going to be a very long quarter for Collingwood. Porter, beaten by Fraser. Leon Davis, from the centre square to the half forward line. Looking for Wosley, goes to ground. Scotland, shares the ball around. Buckley again, been fantastic for Collingwood. He's got the Bronx cheers. But he's battled hard, 26 possessions, he's kicked a goal in a side that has been absolutely humbled for most of the game, apart from the second quarter. Humbled, pummeled and crumbled. Silvani finds Lappin. He's playing on the half forward line, so he covers a bit of territory. There's the high flyer was Kinnear. No free kick and a toss back in. Stephen O'Reilly. Just wetting his lips. Keen to get back into the action. Porter. Very good with his hands. Finds Camparelli, who is quick, on the burst. Loves the run with the ball. Breaks up the lines. Looks for Whitnell, who's booted five. Wants support. He'll get it. Silvani down from full back. Through the centre square. Inside 50. Krasiska in front. Good hands. Not great delivery by Soss. Burns out in the back pocket. We well, just had to keep, kick to a piece of grass. Whitnell overruns it. Leon gets hold of it. You oh. won't run him down. Clever by Whitnell. Ah, oh, freeborn. Up to McKay. In short. Hickmott. 60 metres out. In a hole is Massey. That's just fantastic play by Whitnell down here. What about McKay just sitting there? He's got to get it, surely. So Massey from near the boundary line, across in front of goals. <laughs> Contest, off the ground, Hickmott! He's got a couple. And the way they're lining up at the moment, it would be a disgrace to be in a Carlton jumper today and not kick a goal. Oh, well, or uh, break a high jump record because Scooter's had another crack at it. Here he goes, he's just... I think he might be just entertaining himself, the Cooter, but uh, he's creating opportunities for Crummers at ground level, and Adrian Hickmont off the ground sticks another one through. Well, I've, I've got Cooter in the triple jump, long jump. I've got him in the pole vault and high jump. By the end of the day, I'll have him in the decathlon. Well, that's what he's been built for. And that's what he was as a junior. And there'll be somebody get on the podium in Sydney to pick up Cooter's medal, and he'll <laughs> never know. But if Cooter didn't get signed up by Carlton... Well, this is an amazing compete. start to this last quarter. They've kicked five goals in eight minutes. They kicked 11 goals in that third term, which must be close to a record for Carlton against a Collingwood side. Maybe they can uh, emulate it in this last quarter as well. Davis, 45 metres out, can bend it back. Good goal by the youngster. His first goal of the afternoon. And it was a handy one also for Collingwood supporters. They've just got to look for positives. And on screen is one. Neon Leon is a, uh, is a will of the wisp. He's going to get a lot better and he's going to get uh, very dangerous around the goals. And forwards rely very much on the supply from defence and from their midfield. And there's been no supply to speak of today. So with more opportunities, he is going to become a far more productive player. Rupert Bathiris on the sidelines. Collingwood kicked one goal in the first quarter, one goal in the third quarter, and that's their first goal of the last term there. Stella quarter was in the second quarter when they booted five goals and only outscored by one point by the Blues. Buckley around the corner. Silvani playing in front, consummate defender. Three against one, Porter. Jeez, he's just raw. relishing his chance. Looks athletic. Freeborn through the centre square, out wide. Whitnell's always going to be the target, those strong hands in front. Prestigia Como has just stuck to his task. It's been a difficult one. Hamill, don't argue. Hamill knows best. Beaumont, 45 metres out. Another goal to the Blues. Unbelievable. He's got three. This is an onslaught. Well, this is an onslaught, and uh, well, John Elliott will be happy if the AFL keep programming games here at AFL Park. I'm not sure, sorry, at uh, Optus Oval. 
Everyone says it's the last of the suburban uh, games. Against these two clubs, don't they, say? So does that mean the AFL are never going to uh, program this game here again? They must have it in writing. <laughs> Carlton's highest ever score against Collingwood, 28 goals, 10, in 1943. And they're within a couple of kicks of that. So it looks like being a record-breaking performance here by the Blues against the Pies. Whistle's gone. Free kick to Collingwood right in front. And the crowd booing because uh, they are just lapping this up, the Carlton fans, and they want more and more and more. In this quarter, they've kicked six goals straight to Collingwood's one goal. Andrew Dimitina, just a youngster in his sixth game, brother of Paul Dimitina from the Bulldogs. Dimitina kicking from about 50 or just inside. Let it go well. Good kick. Top kick. That's his first goal for the day. And his second goal in AFL football. And he's also got to be congratulated because he's been around. He's done three seasons at a number of clubs. Finds himself on the rookie list and then brought onto the senior list and has played the last six games. So well done to Andrew Dimitin. He's been on the bench a bit today as well. That's a darn good kick. KB, while we've got the record book, Carlton look like surpassing their highest ever score against Collingwood and their greatest ever winning margin is 104 points. Well, currently it's already 108. Can they get it going forward again? They look hungry for success. Franchina has his kick smothered. Well done, Mal Michael. Silvani in there just crashing through. Buckley in with him. The Blues with quick hands have worked it forward. Culpit gets it wide to Beaumont. Hickmott, here they come again, Fletcher pokes it high, Hamill! I've got to tell you, did he make up some ground to get that ball? He really stretched the hammies, didn't he, Dip? The young Nick Davis didn't take his eyes off the ball either. Not sure I'd want to be in this fella's way when he's at full tilt. Wouldn't that clean you up? So the Blues perhaps heading for a couple of records here against their arch enemy Collingwood. Aaron Hamill kicking from about 48 metres. Beautiful. His second and Carlton's next goal against the Pies today will be a record score against them and they've been playing them for over 100 years. Well, he's kicked seven goals already in this last term. We thought the third quarter was good, Drew, when they booted 11 goals to one. This quarter has been seven goals to two. And Hamill just enjoying his afternoon. Krasiska's, I think Krasiska and Presti Giacomo, whilst, you know, their opponents have been important players, I think they've stuck to their tasks pretty yeah. well. He's had two goals kicked on him today by Aaron Hamill. But it would be a nightmare being in defence today. Good experience for young Josh Fraser. He might jot this down in his memory bank in years to come when he's a uh, more fully-fledged player and a lot of games under his belt. He might enjoy getting back at the Blues one day. He might just recall the day at Optus over when they got flogged. Michael. Big fist away. Orchard just paddling the ball along in front. Silvani a bit too strong. We'll get support. Still got time on him to get to his knees and kick the ball down. Looking for Ratten. Bradley and O'Reilly was there. Clever play, Hickmont, oh. and there's Whitnell. He's got Camparelli running free. And he'll run hard. Camparelli's the target. Burns just got in the way. Wosley can carry the ball back to Burns. He'll run on. Needs a good bounce. Should have really hit his target. And out in front is Dimitino. He's kicked the goal in this last quarter. He's from centre wing. Michael has run hard down from half back to O'Brien. Outside of 50. Buckley's the target. He's got it, not on the second grab. And finally, just 
trickled back over the line for a toss back in. And Buckley just having a few words as well. He was being hung on to there. You can see it quite clearly from Colbert, who's, who's been given the job since he's come onto the ground, obviously, to play on someone like Buckley. Yeah, good experience, experience. for him. Should have been penalised there. and Well, the umpire elected to give that one away. But another one who's, another player's done a great job is uh, Franchina. And Paul Williams kept into just seven possessions. Kicked a goal, great goal in the second quarter, did Williams. Oh, Bree, terrific kick, but how well did Ratton do there? Knocked the ball away and regained his own footy. Well done, Brett Ratton. Orchard has it on the 50. Didn't see the tackler Freeborn coming, and Good Franchina. The Blues are tackling like this one point, the difference. This is sensational. Nick Davis swamped by four of them. She could have been five, I lost count. And it's a very reason, Drew, why why Essendon haven't got this Premiership Cup locked away at Windy Hill. The pressure of Carlton on any given day can uh, unnerve or unsettle Look any it. forward line and uh, they're led by superstars of the competition like Brett Ratton. Palm down by McKee. But Hickmott clears the area. Hamill. McKay at 100 miles an hour. Great tackle. tackle. That was a ripping tackle. He had to give it up. Lecuria in short to Michael. Dimitina. Goes wide, hasn't given it enough. Beaumont's there to punch away. Williams just outside the 50. Look at the pace of Culpert. And Culpert put him under enough pressure to turn it over. It spills to Buckley. Into Lecuria. Poor old kick. Hickmott, Ratton, Silvani. And they can work it out. Lappin looks up the ground. He says, boy, who am I going to give it to here? So he goes for the white line centre wing. But here comes the decathlete. The white line wins. That was uh, Gavin Krasisko hurt himself in that tackle. That was some tackle. When you've got a guy like McKay with his strength and size who is coming through at full pace and then he stood in his way and dragged him to the ground. It was a wonderful tackle. And I reckon, Kevin, when you get up at 5.30 tomorrow morning to uh, do your talkback radio program here in Melbourne, it will be one of the most asked questions this week. Why hasn't Gavin Krasiska been played more this, this year? Well, I'm not quite certain what his form has been like. I can only suggest it hasn't been as good as people have suggested, but I think he stood up well today. Wosley. From right on 50, close to the man on the mark. It's a, a high kick. kick. Big kick. Off target and to the left. Here's the tackle. Absolute perfection. He and spun him as well. That's where he got rolled on as well. It took a bit of the stuffing out of Gavin Krasiska, but gee whiz, to pull him down and bring him down. Well, I know it's only a, only a ho-hum domestic competition, but I reckon even John O'Neill <laughs> of Rugby Union uh, fame would have enjoyed that one. And uh, good afternoon to John if you're watching up there in Sydney. Never misses. Crowd today, 30,027. And so uh, we were talked about all week how it was going to be bulging at the seams and... 70,000 would have gone to the MCG and 30,000 here isn't even full. Did they get scared off by the talk of a full house or did they think this was going to happen? Mm. The marquee was full out the back. 1,000 people in it. Maybe they're still there. O'Reilly. That's, that's a point. He's pushing and shoving and Williams was tied up by Franchino and that's been a tough afternoon for poor Williams. He also copped a a mighty knee in the back from Trent Hodden, was it, or Hamill? Hamill. Yep. In, uh, in the third term, it was it was absolutely poleaxed. So it's been a tough afternoon. Michael Hickmont with strength. Wiry customer. Lappin, hands and knees. Hamill again gets the run of Camparelli, who never stops running. Averaging 27 possessions a game. Kicks the ball out to the flank. Kuda Fides. They just love him as Ratton is bowled over for a boundary throw-in. What's uh, Kuda's stats today? He's had 21 possessions yeah, with Pitt, a couple of goals. Pitt went on here after the tackle. Reece Shaw, just a newcomer to the game in Campo. <laughs> well, he's genetically uh, programmed to do that, like his, <laughs> like his uncle back in the game. Nice He'd be wrestling with Todd Vining now just to keep his hand in. Afternoon, Tony. <laughs> Margin is 113 points, and they started playing games in 1897, these two teams, and the biggest margin for Carlton over Collingwood in all that time has been 104. 
And right at the moment, you've got to question the, the uh, proclamation that you always hear about these games, the blockbuster games, and it doesn't matter. You hear it a number of times during the week, that it doesn't matter where these two clubs are on the ladder, it's always a great game. Well, the last time the, the two, the last three times the two sides have played, have been absolute beltings. Mm. 73 points in uh, round, round three. three. The Millennium game was uh, an absolute blowout, and uh, well, who knows what the margin is going to be tonight or today. Actually, in that Millennium game, I uh, lost track of what the margin was by the end because nobody cared by the end. We're just getting ready for the fireworks. But this is for four premiership points here today, so this is a different matter. And Collingwood just aren't in the same league. McKee wins. Carlton hungry for more. Silvani's hand pass. Look at the runners. It was like a rugby back line. Camparelli, like the wingman, gets on the end of it. Whitnell, good hands. Kick another one, son. And he has not. Oh, it's bounced. It is a goal. Cooter's touched it. Oh, Cooter. <laughs> Now, has that gone over the line? I thought the goal umpire signalled. I think he touched. paid a free kick, didn't he? It was a free kick, uh, uh, Kevin. Yeah. Pushed out here by Kuda Fides. He just pushed. So, in his efforts to you watch here, shepherd that ball there through. There he goes, just yeah. banging. Just pushed uh, Kinnear fair and square in the back. Yep, fair enough. Well, that's one that went begging for the Blues. They lead 27 12 to 9 goals 7. And they're still looking for that one more goal that will be the biggest ever score for them against Collingwood. Oh, oh no. good. Mark. Culpit. So at the, uh, the Goodyear Lightship is uh, an absolute beauty for questionable goal decisions and I reckon the goal umpires this year could have used it uh, on more than one occasion. Be tough to have it at all the grounds though. You couldn't bring it in to a, for a video replay to use officially. Be good for frequent flyer points. Be all over <laughs> the place. <laughs> Buckley was good then yeah, at ground level. Free kick Collingwood. 174 to 61. So it's a 113 point lead to the Blues. They led by 23 at quarter time, 24 at half time, and then the big blowout, 11 goals to one in that third term. They led by 84 points at the last change. O'Brie, edge of the centre square, looking for Burns, and he's got him. Started the game playing on the half forward line on Andrew McKay to just stop some of that run from. McKay, who's been magnificent this year, the All-Australian half-back, found himself on the interchange bench early in the game. Burns from 48 metres, trying to bend it back. Through for a behind. Time clock ticking away, just over five minutes left in this last quarter. Now, John Elliott's reluctance to have this game switched to the MCG, was that uh, for home ground advantage, or was he being just a, a little bit uh, I think it may have been more politically, yeah. politically motivated, Drew. But if it was for home ground advantage, well, he certainly got it. They are hard to beat here. But in the past, though, there's been talk that you couldn't possibly play this game at Optus Oval because it wouldn't be big enough to hold the crowd. Yep. So maybe what we are finding is that you can play games here at Optus Oval because it's certainly not a sellout today. No. Krasiska mops up. Poor hand pass to Buckley, though. Put him under the pump. Krasiska again to Buckley. And the ball's knocked down. It's out in front of goals taken by Presti Giacomo. I'm sure they hit a goal post as well on the way through. Presti's kick. Up in between half back and wing to Orchard. Michael at full stretch. I think a lot of people may have voted with their feet too, KB, as to uh, the popularity of the decision to play it here. Ian Collins might suggest he got it right by programming the game at Optus Oval. Mm. And there was so much pre-match publicity and hype you reckon you had to have filled the stadium today. Leon. Neon Leon right in the goal square. And he will go back and kick a goal. So actually Carlton haven't kicked a goal for about 10 minutes. They had this record well within their sights long time ago. And Davis... Maybe somebody's had a look at the record books. Margin 106, the record's 104. Leon Davis has booted two goals in this last quarter. He's a boy who obviously is going to be a good player for him when he gets uh, more games under his belt. He's quick and he knows where the goals are. And this season will be just 
A great one for him in just his turn, terms of his learning curve. Twenty-seven goals, twelve the Blues. Collingwood ten eight sixty-eight. Porter just relishing his opportunity with Matthew Allen on the sidelines. Ratton, as always, just bullocks his way out of trouble and finds O'Reilly, who looks a bit sharper to me today. Jared, he just uh, he's had a lot of hamstring problems, but he does look a lot sharper. Chris Siska, a push out, playing in front. Well, it's a critical time in the career of Steve O'Reilly. He's He's going to uh, go on and become a vital player in potentially a premiership side or he's going to uh, just wither away through hamstring injuries. He really needs to get six or seven games in a row under the belt. Just looks a little bit sharper to yep. me today in his movements. Some positives there for sure. Hickmott wrestles on the ground with O'Brie, crunched that time by O'Reilly, who gives away the free kick too high. And O'Brie will take the free kick. 19 possessions today and six marks. This might not be a record score and record margin by the end. From half back, Buckley stood his ground. Colpert did well, good body pressure. Franchina dancing feet to Massey. A couple of youngsters combined to the half forward line. Hamill! Oh! <laughs> what a leap! Can he jump? Ratton has yes. got it. Great direction from Mark Porter, who quickly said to Hamill, look, there's a player in the middle, he's on his own, he looks like uh, Cochise, you better get the ball out to him man, what a spectacular grab well this kick is for the record and won't, be, won't that be appropriate after such a mark by Hamill Ratton for the record kick 45 metres out straight through the centre it's the biggest score by Carlton against Collingwood for 57 years well he's kicked three goals Two in that third term, and now that kick, which has given them their biggest ever score against Collingwood. And listen to the Blue supporters because it's just been announced. Yeah, well, that was a smart handball by uh, Heath Culpert. Just see a player do that sort of thing, and you realise he's got tremendous football mouse and ability. And there it is, the record. Carlton's best ever. 28 goals, 10, 178 was the record back in 1943. Now it's 180 points, 20 goals, 12 to 10, 6. Porter wins in the middle. 10, 8. It comes Collingwood's way, and Houlihan dives in there low to take the mark. Silvani. And the margin, margin 112, so that currently is also a record. Silvani out of defence. O'Reilly low down. 180 to 68. Can they crack the 30 goal mark? They've kicked 28 goals, 12. Crowd yelling, ball. Actually, nothing going Carlton's way in the last 10 or 15 minutes. A lot of free kicks have gone Collingwood's way. And do the fans know it. <laughs> How far in front do you have to be before you don't get agitated? <laughs> well, I reckon if you're eating mango and ice cream, you just can't get enough. You know, you just got to keep going. <laughs> got to stuff yourself until you can't go anymore. Three kicks in the final quarter are 6-12. to 12. And for the match, it's 19 to Collingwood and 12 to the make to the Blues. One of my favourites, KB, the mango and ice cream. Yes. You like it? Yes, it's not too bad, Drew. Hamill. Mark of the day about a couple of minutes ago and going to the bench for a rest. Yes, he's off with air sickness. Yeah. <laughs> And a push out, Nathan Buckley will come back. And just going uh, to the statistics, the match statistics, I think it's extraordinary that one side can be uh, some 18 goals behind on the ladder and they've had exactly the same amount of possessions. So it's about efficiency and what to do with it. Buckley, 60 metres out. And nearly made it, but it was way to the left. But it was a big kick by Bucks. Well, just a few seconds ago, 17 seconds left in the match, a record score to Carlton over Collingwood, 28-12 to 10-9. McKay, and you'll hear a terrific roar go around the ground because it's been a big afternoon for the Blues. Fletcher. The Start record the score and the record margin both came on the same day in 1943. 
and the new record has come on the same day in the year 2000. An unbelievable day for the Blues. 28-12 to 10 goals 9. Suburban football, well Optus Oval rocked to the Blues today and the Pies were also rocked. It's a cemetery just over the road, the killing fields of Cubs.